Hello again, Guyana, and welcome to another edition of Facing the Nation. I am Malika Ramsey. Thank you so very much for joining us. Um, as you know, uh, for, especially for those of you who are every week watchers, you saw some new images there in our intro, and I must say a, a very big thank you to our operator here, today's live operator here at CNS Channel 6, for doing that for us. I was just uh, talking to him, and sometimes, especially when we go into a mode of... Um, some people call it depression, but a little down mood. These things really make us happy and change our mood and remind you that in a, a country where we have so much negative, so many negatives going on, we still have good people walking around. So I'd like to say a very big thank you very much to him. And it is indeed significant because it's, it's to remind you that there's still good people left in the world and there's still people who are doing good things even when they're not necessarily asked to. Now, on to today's program. As you know, for the last uh, two or three months, we have uh, dedicated a face in the nation almost solely to local government elections because we were, of course, you know, we were from, we, we all know MPNC and APNU, so I was promoting APNU for local government elections. We've had those elections, they've come and they've gone. Um, but we're going to do our final piece on local government elections for now on today's program. And I thought it fitting to have a young man who has not only the experience, but he has the, the intelligence and the brilliance to talk about uh, local, and local government elections aftermath in terms of what was expected, what the results were, what the results weren't, and where we can go from here. Of course, he's no stranger to uh, facing the nation. Of course, they say the third time is a charm. He had to remind me that this is not his second time on the program, but his third time on the program. I also introduce him to you as a former Georgetown City Councilor. He was just telling me, and I, I understand why some of the people in his community are a bit upset that he didn't run again. Um, he was an independent candidate in the 2016 elections. Um, uh, local government elections. Um, he was the only independent candidate who came out victorious in the sense that he ascended to a seat on the Georgetown City Council. And again, I know he has done an amazing job back then. But today we're going to talk about what he's do been doing since he's off council, why he chose not to return, all of these things. And again, we're going to try as much as possible, especially for Georgetown, to break down some of those results. He'll give to you his opinion. So in its, in a sense, today's program, the beginning of today's program, the first half, is about more or less an analysis. It is my pleasure to welcome back Joe Facing the Nation, former Georgetown City Councilor. He wears so many hats also. Um, I, I describe him as a youth leader. He's a broadcaster, at least I know moments ago, maybe a half hour ago, he just came off of his own radio show. It is my pr <laughs> pleasure to welcome back. You see, I'm getting tight on because it's exciting to have him and he <laughs> talks a lot. The last time he was here, I call him like I'm trying to figure out who can out talk. You are Malcolm. <laughs> I give it to Malcolm hands down. It is my pleasure to welcome back to Facing the Nation, Mr. Malcolm Ferreira, um, one of Th guys. Thank you. Sweethearts, Welcome thank you, back. thank you. How are you doing? I'm you, you, great. You're not great aging. Great. I'm uh, not. I gotta come ever so often to, to remind you that whatever you're right. doing, you need to keep doing I need it. To keep doing it. All right. Yeah. Listen, you I got great. this secret. I'm gonna put it because you look good yourself. But you know, with all these great men can always look good. <laughs> so I have the I secret. I'm going to put it in a bottle and bring mm. it to you the next time you come on. It sounds like a baku, yeah. And, and, and that <laughs> is my way of getting you to promise that you'll come back. Malcolm, it is always so nice to chat with you because the conversations are always real. We're in a time right now, especially in the last few hours, in the last week, where we need to be reminded of the reality of the things on the ground. But even before we get to the local, um, more or less analyzing some of the results, especially for Georgetown, because you've done a lot of work in Georgetown. Let's talk about Malcolm Ferreira. The first thing I want you to tell Guyana, those who don't know, why you chose not to run again in 2018. Um, thank you. Thank you. Good day to, to everyone. Um, a combination of reasons, uh, Malaika. Um, first and foremost uh, is having the time to dedicate to representing a constituency and by extension Georgetown. Um, I don't believe I'll have enough time right now because I'm embarking on some youth projects that will need a lot of my time. Um, I got a foot in. I got it wet. I understand how the procedures go and how the systems work and I believe it's it was a time for another person okay. to be given that opportunity that I got 
Um, that's not the, the extent of my ambitions, to sit around the horseshoe table. There are higher offices in this country that I aspire to. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you have to take an L to win. Mm. Sometimes you, you take a knee and you say, okay, I'll pass here because this stop on the journey is necessary, but it's not absolutely necessary at this at moment. This moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to pull back and let people see really what they're dealing with and then they get a clear understanding of what it is, you know. Um, persons are of the impression, I heard it on the campaign trail, uh, I'm going to promise you this, I'm going to promise you, you can't promise nothing, you got to promise to try to get onto a committee that is then going to make a recommendation to full council and then hope that they approve of it and mm -hmm. then find the funds to carry mm -hmm. out whatever you're promising. Is it difficult or easy, and I'm talking about your experience on, on, on council, and it's a general question, not necessarily Malcolm Ferrer, but is it easy or difficult to get things done, especially when you, you were one of the communities you were representing was the all boys community. Mm. Is it difficult or easy to get things done for a community like that through the council? Um, according to what you're trying to get done, okay. if it's something that requires a uh, lot of fund or funding, it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. As you know, council is cash strapped uh, because of various reasons. Uh, some of those reasons are coming out or coming out in the commission of inquiry. Mm -hmm. um, it is easy in the sense when you have a, a feeling for it and this is what you want to do, help develop your community and in by extension the, the city. So what you find happening is that um, looking for funds is going to be difficult, but, but if you get the cooperation and support of the neighborhood and the community, you, you could get lots of stuff done. But then again, there are certain things that only money, a substantial amount of money could get done for you. You know, you could ask residents to clean and stuff, but the heavy lifting mm -hmm. and stuff, you, you need money to get the, the equipment at least to, the, to do it. Does Malcolm Ferreira, the former councillor, the former Georgetown City councillor, believe that the COI into City Hall was necessary? Yes, it was necessary. Um, I don't agree necessarily with the timings of it. Okay. You don't want to bring certain things close to elections. Ah. This is known around the world. Not saying we're a much younger nation than the U.S., but in the, what is it, 60 days leading up to an election, the FBI, and so they hold. hold they would not indict someone. So when, when the, the, the former director, James Comey, did say that um, Mrs. Clinton, we're opening back the investigation, mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was precedent being set. Normally, they would shut them out around that time, so close to an election. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in the, the timings okay. of the, the COI. I, I, I wondered if, you, if it was the opposition that did it, I would expect that from them. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I call a spade a spade. I love that. And then even the person that is running the COI, mm -hmm. those who know Guyanese history, ah. I, I talk all this on my show. Those no, who know Guyanese history, they are aware of the implications and the workings and the what this person was a part of. Tough, exactly. Let's be frank. Let's be fair. Mm -hmm. Which allegedly was a violation of the Constitution. There you go. So you can't and tell me know. And up. again, for those of you who are trying to pull and try to understand <laughs> what Malcolm <laughs> is talking about, go do your research. And it's very important that you speak these things, especially for the younger person. But come yeah, be Malcolm. because you have 18 and 19 year olds who are saying, rrr, rrr, they have no understanding. They got Google. But I'm mean, using it for using the it, exactly. probably looking for porn hub. You understand? I hope not. No, seriously. So when you understand the history of your country, I found it to be if I ask you a question to make you incriminate yourself and you beat around the bush, you're allowed to do that, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. You're yes. supposed to do that. Yes. I can't expect you to incriminate yourself. Mm -hmm. Um Madam Pat Patricia Chase Green at that moment was the mayor of this. Mm -hmm. And I know which incident you're talking and about. And you can't here. tell the mayor, shut up. There you go. And it seems as though you're attacking persons who were there for you to. Your work is to gather information. <laughs> gather information. You understand? Mm -hmm. If you have to ask questions for it, compile it as a report, probably with recommendations, and shut your mouth and do that. Yeah. Malcolm, let me interject When you look at you. A, no, one second, please. Go when ahead. you when it opens the door, mm -hmm. you understand, for persons to disrespect people, and then turn around and say, "Oh, I'm not going to apologize for that. You gotta stop prattling or whatever were your words." I don't agree with that. 
in the eyes of persons who have an understanding of the history of Guyana, some would be forced to say you're on a biased footing, even though you didn't even finish exactly. your report. Exactly, and that is why I wanted <laughs> to interject here. Do you feel, because I certainly did, do you feel that there were, that more significantly influential persons in our society should have come out publicly in defense of uh, her and her office, meaning um, uh, the uh, Madam Patricia Trace Green, at that time, do you feel that more influential persons should have come out in defense of her? Well, in asking or thinking the person should defend, I, I, I know they're going to look at, at the person's track record, mm. but that incident really had nothing Not to do with your track record. Mm -hmm. That incident is, is calling it for what it may. Um, a question is actually supposed to answer and all that, but it should never meet the stage where you're telling the elected official to shut up okay. when you were selected. Couldn't be me there, you know. Mm -hmm. That interview was over after reading him his history. <laughs> exactly. And then I'm out of there. Sorry you can't disrespect me. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't take that. Regardless, if you're interviewing the president and uh, you're trying to get information out of him and he goes around and around and around in and he's not answering you on point, you, you can't it. say shut up, even if it's, a, well, you're going to say, oh, it's a commission of inquiry. It's different. They're not the police. Mm -hmm. Do they have legal powers to arrest? Mm -hmm. The questioning going down uh, on records and all this, this is not a, a police investigation per se. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if someone uh, refuses to answer a question, then you have to deduct why they're refusing and the surround to make a conclusion. Oh, you don't want to answer because it's probably this. Mm -hmm. And if they're going wrong and wrong and wrong, you ask them to go back. But to tell but the to tell mayor them. to shut up is a slap in the face and everybody that's supported. Think about if you'd be supporting the mayor that was sitting there and they tell your mayor to shut up, to what shut you would you feel? Exactly. And that's what happens in Guyana. We don't care enough for each other. Perfect. And that is why I always like when you come here because you're frank. I want to talk about, even again, viewers, we're still going to be talking about uh, the aftermath of the local government elections. But before we do that, because I know there's still a lot more that you're doing, even mm -hmm. now that you're out of city council, I want you to talk about some of the things that you would have been doing uh, while you were councilor. You talk about, talked about several youth groups and plans for others. How are those going and what's, what's new on the table and how have you been working along with government, if I, at all? I don't like to, but presently I'm, I'm, I'm doing, uh, uh, I'm not under an NDA, no. I didn't sign in on this question, but I'm not supposed to discuss. Not I'm, to, mm -hmm. um, but I'm doing... Uh, Say what you can. Mm -hmm. An educational project. Okay. All right. With the Ministry of Education. I think it's a great project for young people. Mm -hmm. uh, that is going to be rolled out sometime soon. The deadline is, is quickly arriving. Mm -hmm. um, my greatest failure was the not being able to continue the Maikoni Future Leaders Youth Group. I, and I do apologize. We were almost 6,000 strong young people from 1 to 18 years old and, and I didn't get the, the, the financial support to, to keep it going. You know, when I failed the children in that youth group, I mm -hmm. did, I failed, you know. Um, I'm not going to blame the team, I'm going to blame myself. So we're looking to have that resuscitated soon. They're, we still have our group, you know, and they're still active. And I don't want so much because they would abuse me. <laughs> but I'm looking to resuscitate with the team, the Maikoni Future Leaders Youth Group. Um, and uh, we're looking to head out to town and start another. Because due to the fact that we had the ambitious future leaders in Albaistan and Charleston and the work that we did with them and the places they went and, and what they were exposed to, many children from other regions saw and were like, okay, come on. So we, we made an affiliation with a sister club at um, Success, Craig Success. Uh, they have a youth group up there, mm -hmm. over 100 strong. And we've linked with them. So there's a sister group and we started my Coney and my Coney, uh, we, we didn't get to do it how we wanted to. So we're looking to resuscitate and we're heading out to town to do some more work. I plan to work with, with, with elected officials in my constituency uh, because I believe it's important that we all play a part. We can't blame people if we don't uh, become or try to be a part of the solution. So I'll be working, I'll hand over, I'll make a formal handover. I'm still a counselor actually, you know. Yes, because they haven't been sworn, haven't been sworn to, yes, to yes, kick so us out. Yes. <laughs> my, my apologies, he's still a counselor. Yes. So they, they haven't done that as yet. Uh, congratulations to everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, going in there, just put on your head, work hard. You got to compromise, but you got to stand up and you got to fight, and you'll get gray like Malcolm did. 
that is a must. Uh, <laughs> viewers, if you're now tuning in today, my conversation obviously is with Mr. Malcolm Ferrer, no stranger to our country. We are talking post uh, local government elections. And as I did say, this is going to be our final conversation on Facing the Nation about local government elections um, for now. Malcolm, a lot, so many things happened pre local government elections 2018 and post, even mm -hmm. though post it's barely been a week, not even a full week. Um, first off, of course, we started off with uh, the a component of the government deciding to go on their own, mm -hmm. to run mm -hmm. on their own. There are some analysts now who believe that the what again is still the APNU AFC coalition as a government, even though they run separately as um, local government for local government elections. There are analysts out there who now believe that we are we have seen the results of that after the elections in terms of obviously the AFC did disastrous based on the numbers that we're seeing, even though GCOM has not officially put out a general statement as yet, but people believe that we're seeing the, the results, the consequences of running alone. Um, you have, in the last few hours, you've had talks flying, along, flying around about hmm, no confidence <laughs> motion, and people believe that all of the things that are happening now, they're, seem, they're seemingly pa seeming panic in some quarters. People believe that all of this is as a result of the results of those local government elections, especially what we saw happening in Georgetown. You had you have issues of apathy. Let me get Malcolm Ferreira's take on all of that. <coughs> all right, results, results first. Results oh. and what if you is may happening? start where you started the the separation. Go ahead. The um, the Valentine love affair. <laughs> I thought it was that went so in in October. <laughs> <laughs> um. It is good that it happened. Okay. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. um, I see it more as a positive than a negative. Mm -hmm. Nobody can bounce strong higher than the self right now. Everybody got to know the place. Mm. And when I mean know the place, some says the AFC, I mind you, I don't speak on behalf of any party. Mm -hmm. The AFC did disastrously. Um, if you had expectations of them doing better. Ah. 2011. 2007, I believe. That was six. Oh, six. Six. Check, check what obtained there, and don't you see it's just about the same thing that's there? The uh, problem is the AFC uh, wasn't out there as the AFC after they would have gathered those seven seats in that in that sitting of that's uh, the sitting of parliament, the, the 11th, I believe it was, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah life of the parliament. So, uh, after coming under the umbrella with the APNU, I believe some of the independence was absorbed. Because when you're on a team, you got to play teamwork. No, it's teamwork. Mm -hmm. You understand yeah. that. Play you have to box. understand that, right? Um, I believe the president made one of the most mature political statements ever made in Guyana. Closed the election as well by saying, do not vote for party, vote for those you believe could do something for you and your community. I believe that was one of the most mature, and I applaud him. I've been doing that for saying that. Now, during the, the separation for local government, um, it's good that it happened, but it shouldn't have because you're sending conflicting messages to your supporters, many of whom you have to go and explain so they have an understanding that at local at a local level you can go separate, but at a national level you can go together. My whole contention, I spoke about it, I invited the... Uh, candidates from all the political parties and independents were on my show. I believe that now um, they got a lot of work to do because, yes, the AP and new AFC leadership could come together, sit down, yeah, we talk and we good, but what happens to the man in the street who lives in Kitty and one living in Sophia that ain't gonna meet? You understand? And then you're gonna ask these same people after you're done lashing your broadside and expose the weaknesses you of go. your own coalition members. Mm -hmm. You can turn and say, oh, it's just local government. No, you fracture the relationship between yes. those two parties. It's fractured. As long as ego is bruised, it will be fractured. You understand? And you've also fractured the, 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 the understanding of a coalition for your supporters. So you have to go clear that up. You understand? The results of the elections clearly show that they did not vote one. And it was a landslide. If... Almost three out of four persons don't give an account of 
approving you or disapproving in then you understand where we are you know i wouldn't be proud as a counselor right now less than 30 percent you're watching is even less is some of the outlying areas that had 40 50 percent they brought up the overall total to 28.3 george is less than that so when you have I wouldn't be with my chest up, strutting around like 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 proud peacock. So nobody should strut. No, you shouldn't. When three out of four people didn't care to to have a say in this, you don't walk around like a winner. You know what I mean? The people have lost. Because we know the midterm as this would be termed local government. Mm -hmm. It has a lower turnout. We understand that. But how do you dip on the 30%? And how do you dip even lower in, in the, the capital? Should the coalition government, and, and, and this is according to Malcolm Ferreira's opinions and the people who you talk to and deal with daily, should the coalition government use this as a yardstick or should they worry about 2020? Um, you see, if the idea... Now, according to the analysts, young people didn't go to the polls mm -hmm. in the majority, the vast majority. Some of them blaming young people now. If it wasn't, if you already go, we, yeah, we would have done better. Why I, did they go? No, right. I, I so, would, in that case, I would defend the young people. But if, go ahead. If it is to get the young people to the polling station, 2020, then you're going to lose. If it is to empower young people, then your polling station will have people. Mm -hmm. They know this. I don't have to explain this to them. Um, I don't believe it was it was a, it wasn't necessarily a rejection. It was a message, but it was it was a collective message that didn't come from a collective position. It wasn't okay broadcast, young people. We're not going to vote. It is amongst themselves that they said, they "Look, me, we're going to speak I quiet about it. yeah, we're just gonna look and see." And that's silence. That's the greatest message you should hear. And it hurts. You know, the it, most. It, it has to hurt because everybody's still talking about winning, winning, winning. When will the Guyanese win? Because I'll tell you this here, Malika, and, 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 and I've been saying this for years. I don't care who vex. Young people, they're going to have options. They need options. And if those options fall outside of your political party, be whatever, then you didn't get roast. Cat eat your dinner. That's it. Yeah, and even though we don't like it, there is always the option to not vote. Yes, there is. And it's a democratic right to not vote as well. Yeah, because it's not uh, illegal in Guyana to not you vote. You know, so if you use them right off the box, promising them Thank you. the things that they, they, they look forward to, oh, when I get in power, you're going to get this, you're going to get that. And you don't show an inkling of moving towards those same promises that you make, then you know what they're going to do? They're going to listen to the promise of someone else. And that someone could be the person you don't like or you wish it were. Or they're going to find leaders amongst themselves and challenge you. It's simple as that. If they got over 70% of the voting power, they could push up their young people and take the country. And we ain't talking these things because we don't want young people to hear it. We think these major parties, no. But they could make room and accommodation and provision, and ha it's supposed to be. No party is supposed to be. A young people should feel as though you're left out. It's supposed to be there because I, I could remember clearly the, the wave that, that came across, the green and yellow wave that came across Guyana in 2015. The faces of 90% young people out there doing everything. Let me get a simple, simple, simple example. Marijuana. We're still jailing people for marijuana, you know. That was a campaign promise. We still jailing our young people, breadwinners, taxpayers, non-violent people for a spliff. And then we turn around and we pardon them at but, independence. But Malcolm, don't you believe there would be a danger in just allowing an opening? I, I mean, viewers, I may be coming because this is it's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. So I may, I may be building on that. But don't you believe that there is a danger in open and again viewers at this point i'm not speaking for a partnership for national unity i'm speaking for like no. rams yes <laughs> yes you know guys oh the APS. no 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 the, in this moment on this particular issue i'm speaking for <laughs> like rams but don't you believe that oh, just opening it up in mm. terms of of, of marijuana smoking mm -hmm. marijuana and so on don't you believe that there's also a danger in that whereby this is a site a society where we already have so many different social ills that we're mm -hmm. trying to battle True. with and fight don't True. you believe that that is actually adding to the pile? Undercover use of drugs is even worse than open. 
Really and that's powerful. what we're pushing them on the ground and then they can get lead to harder drugs. Because our surveys and, and um, experience and history has proven, so why the whole country not drinking rum and getting drunk and all the children smoking cigarettes that are illegal and cheap? Why isn't that happening? Hmm. It is, in many instances, I believe, the little thrill attached to it that would make someone want to go and try it. Look, you have families that were broken up. A man is placed in jail for three years for a spliff. And a man that got 100 kilos of cocaine is given a suspended sentence. And I near the Bar Association raking the magistrate over and looking for revoke you and charge you only we see if it's a conspiracy. No one is doing that. But we wait until our national hero, our footballer, was caught. And then I'm um, to use that to jump in and everybody had to jump in and all of this. Look, this thing is very simple, you know. It's affecting your young population. And if you don't want to deal with it, a young person is going to rise up and say, I will legalize it. And for that alone, that statement alone, you lose 50% of your young people vote. Because everybody's smoking weed. Even the people that must sit down and they want to legalize it, they're using it. God forbid till their son, niece, nephew, grandson or somebody get hold with a spliff, they could pick up the phone and say, hey, Lucy. Or lose her. Many can't do that. So you have an 18-year-old in the prison for six grams of marijuana. You understand? This is a person with a future. Look, I could have been a 17-year-old caught with weed and Malcolm Ferreira would not have been the Malcolm Ferreira you know. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so passionate about it. I understand. It I could understand have happened to passion. me. You know, and by the way, the government giving up billions of dollars in revenue to This is one of the, the, most, the fastest growing industry, one of them. Really? Yes, marijuana. Canada legalized and they had to cut down the amount. Everybody sold out. I wonder if the finance minister would challenge you on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want to challenge him. I'd want to show yeah. him how we could get some more money, you know what I mean? We have land. That's what we have. We have climate. You understand? We have, if you build roads, you're going to have easy access to these lands. These lands are right behind here, you know, not too far away. We have cheap labor comparatively. We have young people that are out of work. Mm them for farm let the country make money you know things i look at when you 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 privatize everything the country loses you know why we can't borrow 500 million to open a goal a dredge for ourselves for guyana to go to our coffers mm -hmm. why we have to give our land to people to use the same loan to build the the setup and mine our goal why we can't mine we own goal you understand Indeed. This, this, is, this is some of the things that are, that are happening in our country that no one wants to speak about. Some persons about. are not, 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 we don't have enough programs where persons can express themselves, you know. Uh, we, we, we're talking and we're fighting and we're pulling on this side. This person said they win. This other person said they win. You bring a no confidence. You don't kick a man when he's down. Well, uh, this is my personal Yeah, view. that's your personal You view, don't kick a man when he's down. People may argue that they're kicking the man when they're down. When they're down is actually the side that's doing the kicking. It's, it's their job. Mm -hmm. to, 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 to kick a man to when kick he's a man. Yeah, I've heard that argument. Man, when, when he's done. For your own benefit, yes. Politics. No one, I didn't see a, a, a no confidence. Uh, you don't have a majority. You don't have the support of anyone to have a majority. You bring a no confidence. You, on, you want to talk shop. Well, that, well the it's, good, it's, good, it's great. It's great, right? It's great. Ain't nothing wrong with it. No, if the I law mean, it, allows it. That group, that group, that particular individual is known for bluffing Guyana anyway. No, so no, it's okay. The government should welcome the no confidence. Mm -hmm. Because the history of Guyana didn't start in 2015, you know. Thank you very much. You know, Good but reminder. like, some of y'all need people for really write your speech. Because like, y'all know what for saying your speech. <laughs> y'all advisors and them putting in wrong words and them thing. Let me know really for writing your speech. You could read out the whole history. You want to come and have a no confidence? Come on, brother. Let's read out the 400 plus people that die and nobody never know. Let's read out that the drug lord put out a middle page ad in all the national newspapers saying, I use my money from drugs proceed to pay the teachers and the doctors and the nurses, the soldiers and the police. I'm looking straight in the camera. Supposed to give me the shot there. <laughs> yes, that is what. I'll read your history out for you. You want to debate about Guyana? No confidence? This is not going to be prorogued. Let's go. You see, the thing is, you fold when you heard of a no confidence. You, you remember? Mm -hmm. Th that's the other day, that's three years ago. Yes. You fold and then came out smiling and said, hey, hey, we got one for you, prorogue. Not even though you shoot yourself in the foot. Exactly, that was not success. So you had a great chance to defend your record back then. You know, you chose not to. You chose to shut it down. Now you want to bring the same thing to ask someone to defend their record. Malcolm. Fair enough. I'll Every time I bring ring. you here, time is run out. I get not only time <laughs> runs out, I get more.